Hello again everyone. This video is about making four position controls for a light controller. I've done two episodes before this on a four position control for a light controller, uh, but uh, I've had a question which wants slightly different values and gives me a bit of information which makes me think there might be a bit of a training opportunity in here. So let's go for this. I'll add this on as episode three. Now the question came as uh, a comment on one of my YouTube videos about logic switches, uh, but the, the answer to this doesn't involve logic switches at all, unless you desperately want to. So I'll read out what the question says. Um, it's come from Ken. He's got one of the Unilight controllers. I'm going to have a guess that it's the Unilight 4 channel. And anyway, he says, let's say I have the controller on a three position switch. I need to output the following values. Minus 102%, minus 10%, plus 110%. This represents beacon only, beacon and nav lights, beacon and nav and strobes and landing lights, respectively. Of course, when I pull up the gear, I want the landing lights to go out. Say this happens when the controller sees a value of plus 60. The way I accomplish this currently is that my transmitter allows me to specify the actual digital values of a switch so I can tell it minus 102, minus 10, plus 110. Then I cheat when the gear switch is up by mixing in a minus 50, because 110 minus 50 gives you 60. This is not very elegant and might need different values if I changed controllers. There must be a better way based on the positions of the actual switches, but since the three position switch is used, I'm not sure how to use logical switches. OK, well, we'll do all this without logic switches, although, as I said, if you desperately want to, you can invoke a logic switch just to make sure that you don't move the two position switch uh, when you've got the three position switch in the wrong positions. Uh, but what I wanted to talk about was the three initial values there for the switch to output minus 102%, minus 10%, plus 110%. As soon as I see values beyond 100, like minus 102 and plus 110, um, alarm bells sound in my head. Um, what I suspect this user has done is that in order to get minus 10% when the switch is at centre, is use the servo sub trim. Um, and uh, that has then forced him at the other end to go to plus 110 to get actually what is really an output of plus 100. And this highlights a problem of using servo sub trim. Servo sub trim is not adjusting a point. It's not the center point it adjusts the entire frame of the servo travel. So imagine a servo goes from um, minus 45 degrees to zero degrees to plus 45 degrees. If you adjust its midpoint from zero degrees to minus 10 degrees, it doesn't now rotate minus 45, minus 10, plus 45. The whole thing shifts. So it will go minus 55, minus 10, plus 35. And if you need to get the servo all the way around to plus 45 in order to operate the switch, you're going to have to use uh, over 100% travel values to get it round there. And so I have a suspicion that's what's happened here, because the Unilight controller is not going to demand 110% out of Jetty, or at least I'd be incredibly surprised if it demanded 110% out of Jetty to get it to its end point. And the reason being... 100% on Jetty is already 125% JR. And I can't see um, Unilight making a controller that would require you to go up to 125% on a JR just to reach the end point. Um, and if you're going to 110% Jetty, you're up to something like 140% JR travel. So I just don't believe it. And that's why I suspect that he's used um, Inactivity sub, alarm. sub trim to go around to minus 10, and that's what shifted all this frame quite inelegantly. Okay, let's go in and have a look then at how, it, how I would do this. There could be other ways of doing it. Um, 
So the model is already set up with the function assignment. The light has been assigned to a three position switch. Comme ça. Okay. And what do we do if we need these uh, other values of minus 102, minus 10, plus 110? Um, as I say, I suspect those are wrong because of shifting the servo subtrim, but let's say the subtrim's at zero and everything, it genuinely does need those values. Um, you could do it in servo subtrim. I'd be more tempted to do it through the function curve. If we go to light, three point, and we can now go in and adjust all those points. The important one here is if you don't use subtrim, use this, use that to take it down to the minus 10 point. In case you're wondering why these, these values like minus 10 and stuff come in, uh, it's because the Unilight controller um, has more than just three or four or five positions. It's uh, got something like 15 different positions. Imagine a, you've assigned it to a rotary knob and every few clicks of you turn the rotary knob, it goes into a different sequence. So it might come on with just the um, uh, a beacon at first doing a, a slow on-off flash and you turn it a bit further, it goes to a fast on-off flash and a bit further, it goes to a two-on, one-on, two-on and then a bit further and another light joins it in a different sequence and another, you turn it a bit further in different sequences. So that's what's going on. Um, so there we give our minus 10 and go up here. You could go to your plus 110. But as I say, I suspect that uh, you'll be able to leave all of these at the 100 value and use the center point here because this is a point. It's not the whole frame adjustment like Subtrim does. And that would give you your minus 10 output. Uh, so we'll say OK to that. Let's have a look in the servo travels. So now we're going from 100, minus 10, minus 100. And if I go back to that, if we stick with Ken's original values, let's say you really did need those. Say OK. Have a look at that. Then you'd be going 110, minus 10, minus 102. Okay, just for the sake of neatness, oops, we'll come back, put those back to the 100% mark. So we've got the minus 100, minus 10, plus 100. Okay, now how does he get uh, back to the 60% value? Well, we can do that with the dual rate. Uh, you could do it by mixing, as he suggested in the question. There's no problem with that. You could mix in minus some value, take it back. Um, dual rate's another way of doing it. So it will be the two-position switch that we'll allocate. There we go. Doesn't matter which way around we allocate it, because we'll just put it the way we want it and adjust the numbers. Um, so let's say that when the switch is in the down position... That's when he wants the output to be 60, not 100. So we'll come up here. And let's have a look at that. So we want the plus 100 position to go to minus 60. Uh, sorry, plus 60%. Uh, now, the fact that we've adjusted the center position is probably going to tweak that a little bit, but not a great problem. And what we'll do is just rattle it down to 60% for the moment. It doesn't matter that we're doing it symmetrically because if you're only doing it when the switch is at that position then it's not going to have any effect on the others anyway. Okay, let's take a look at the effect on the servo output. So switch that off. So we're going from 100 minus 10 minus 100. Go back there to the plus 100, switch that on and we've got a 60% output. Lovely. Uh, of course, I was wrong in thinking that the minus 10% would affect it. It affects you down the curve, but not at the end point. So you can dial up exactly the point you need. There it is. See the little gun sight move? It's there. And get exactly the travel you want out of it. Now, I mentioned earlier on you might want to logic switch it. And the reason is this. Let's ha uh, have a look at the output. Uh, if we switch... 
to the 60% mark, then of course, because we've done that travel, it's going to affect everything. Okay, doke. Say OK to there. What we could do, of course, is make it non-symmetrical. So we'll take the symmetry off and we'll put switch down to there, the opposite end, and we'll take that one back up to 100%. Okay, let's have a look. So the uh, gear is in, what's this? This is the down position with everything on. So there we go. There's our original values. Go to the gear up where you want the landing lights off and it goes to 60. And there we are. There's our minus 10 and minus 100. So it'll work beautifully like that. Or as I say, if you really want to logic switch it, <coughs> you could do a logic switch of the two positions combined, which would then be your switch here. But you can do the whole thing quite happily within the dual rates, just by using asymmetrical dual rate. So why bother? So there you go, uh, problem solved nice and neatly.